Hey everyone, in the previous video we began the concept of IUPAC nomenclature which included the rules for naming organic compounds. The first rule was you have to identify the longest carbon chain which is unbranched. You number them in a way that the substitutes or the branches get smaller numbers like methyl was a branch, ethyl was a branch. Then we did some examples with the skeletal and the displayed formula and we saw how these branches could be double so we used the phrase di before them or tri if the branches were three in number. We did some examples with dimethyl, trimethyl and even ethyl. Then we looked at the numbering of alkene and alkynes where the position of the carbon-carbon double bond or carbon-carbon triple bond is mentioned before mentioning alkene or alkyne. Then we started the naming of functional groups. We just introduced them, you know. We knew there was a halogenoalkane, which was chloro, bromo, or iodo. Then we did some example of alcohols, which have the hydroxyl functional group, and, and like carboxylic acids, have the carboxylic acid group, and their name ends with oic acid. For example, one carbon would be methanoic acid, two carbon would be ethanoic acid, and so on. In today's video, we'll introduce the concept of aldehydes and ketones. Aldehydes and ketones, they both have the same functional group, which is carbonyl. Carbonyl functional group is a carbon double bonded to oxygen. It's very similar in looking like the carboxylic acid functional group, but it does not have the OH. The aldehydes have the carbonyl functional group in the corner, and there could be a hydrogen on the one side and a carbon chain on the other side. So aldehydes are always terminal. Aldehydes are always terminal. So you don't have to mention their position ever. We know they are terminal. The name of the aldehydes end with the phrase AL. So this is the suffix for them. For example, one carbon aldehyde would be called methanol. Two carbon aldehyde would be called ethanol. AL, I am trying to help you distinguish between alcohol and aldehyde because alcohols have OL in the end and aldehydes have AL in the end. Ketones have the carbonyl functional group somewhere in the middle. So you do have to talk about their position, but make sure they are positioned with a smaller number. So you have to number it in a way that ketone gets a smaller number. Let me give you some examples. For example, the molecule here, this is our longest chain. You can see this is the aldehyde functional group. What I am highlighting right now in a red box, it is the aldehyde functional group. FG means functional group. I'm just writing FG. You number it in a way. So aldehyde carbon gets first position. Don't, don't omit the aldehyde carbon. It is a part of the chain. Second carbon on the left third and fourth. So it is four carbon aldehyde. You will call it butanel. 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 Al because it's the aldehyde functional group and but because it is a four carbon chain. Let's have one more example. Over here I have another longest chain. I have my aldehyde functional group. You can see that towards the left side this time I have a methyl also on one of the carbons let's position it aldehydic carbon becomes one then two three four so my methyl branch is on carbon number three you will get done with the methyl first so just call it three methyl you will call it three methyl and then it's a four carbon aldehyde so you will call it again butanel but notice there is no gap in the phrase, in the whole word, in the whole name. There is no gap. So make sure I won't be writing any gaps in the name unless it's carboxylic acid. In the third example, you can see 
I have another carbonyl, but this time the carbonyl is not on the corner. It's in the middle. You can see this is my carbonyl. So it's a ketone, not aldehyde. You number it in a way that ketone becomes a smaller number. So from the right side, it would be more appropriate so that ketonic carbon, the carbonyl carbon becomes number two. Otherwise, it would become number three. If you had numbered it from the left, the ketone would become number three. We don't want that. Here, in such a case, to name a ketone, the name should end with the phrase own, O-N-E, own. So here, the name would be called butin. Then you would mention the position of the ketone, which is number two, butin to own. So without the number, it sounds like butanone. But here you have to talk about the position. So butan to own. Let's pick more examples. In this example, it's again an aldehyde on carbon number one towards the left, towards the right, sorry. You, let's number it number one, which is the aldehydic carbon. Number two, three, four. Now it's a little trickier. You can see there is a methyl on carbon number three, and you can see there's a bromo functional group on carbon number two. B because of the bromo and methyl because of the methyl group, M because of the methyl group. B comes first. So number the bromo first. It would be called two bromo. Then you will call it three methyl. Notice that I have hyphens between the numbers and the letters. A hyphen is used to separate a number and a, and a, and a letter or a word. So 2-bromo, 3-methyl, and then you will call it butanel. You don't have to talk about the position of aldehyde. We already know it's carbon-1. Let's do the example towards the left. This time it's becoming more complicated because there's also a carbon carbon double bond alkene. I have my ketone. I will try to number the ketone in a way that it gets smaller numbers. So left is a better starting point. We start from left carbon one ketonic carbon becomes carbon two then three four which have the double bond between them carbon 5 which has a cl at the bottom and carbon 6 there's a chloro functional group at the bottom on carbon number 5 there's a carbon carbon double bond between carbon 3 and carbon 4 now remember it's not a ketone as a normal one it's not an alkane ketone it has alkene functional group also so here you will have to add the phrase in somewhere in the answer let's figure out how first you will call the substitute you will mention all the branches which is obviously only chloro here so you will call it five chloro in the beginning but instead of calling it hexanone you should call it hexenone focus on the pronunciation it's not hexanone it's hexenone so it would be called hex then you will phrase the ene end with a number. So hex 3 ene because there is a double bond on carbon 3 and then 2 own. Why did we write 3 ene? Because a carbon carbon double bond, a carbon carbon double bond on carbon number 3 and there is a 2 own because ketone on carbon 2 ketone on carbon 2 so on carbon 2 there was a ketone on carbon 3 there was a double bond beginning so we called it 5 chloro 3 in uh, hex 3 in 2 own let's pick one more example of this sort so that we become habitual of naming more difficult compounds you can see there's again a ketone over here again a ketone we number it in a way so ketone gets a smaller number. So let's start numbering from the right. Carbon 1. Ketone becomes carbon 2. 3, 4 again have a double bond. 
carbon 5 is the corner one. You can see there's a bromo on carbon 1, and you can see there's a methyl on carbon 1. So B because of the bromo, M because of the methyl. Let's, let's name it, let's number it. It would be called 1 bromo, then it would be called 1 methyl. So 1 bromo, 1 methyl, and then you will call it pentenone. So pent because 5 carbons, 3 ene, 2 ohm. 1 bromo because a bromo on carbon 1, 1 methyl because again methyl, pent because 5 carbons, 3 ene, 2 ohm. So 3 has a double bond beginning and 2 ohm because it's a ketone on carbon 2. Now, let's revise what we did today. We did the naming of the aldehyde and the ketonic functional groups. We saw that the naming ends with AL in case of aldehyde and ON in case of ketone. Then we looked at the fact that we have to mention the branches like bromo, methyl or chloro before we can begin the main chain's name. So the chloros, the bromos, the methyls are named first.